Well, well I'm going to let Coach get started because, again, it's not about me. Um, Coach James is an assistant at San Antonio Sotomayor uh, High School in the great state of Texas. Um, actually, in the great state of uh, not great state, great city of San Antonio, um, my favorite place. Um, actually, speaking of which, I need to talk to you because I'm going to be down in that area in July so we can get some lunch or something. I need to remember. Come on. Um, Coach is going to talk uh, formations and adding the run game. Uh, Coach, the floor is yours. I appreciate it. Uh, well, once again, thanks, Coach, for having me. Uh, I have a lot of stuff to talk about and, you know, that 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 window we have. So I'll kind of get started. Uh, so when Coach asked me to do this, we talked about formations and adding numbers to the run game. So anytime you want to do that, I, I just think that your game plan, where it starts, everything else, the first thing, like, uh, let me see here, Coach Malone, who was just on, love his organization, right? I'm I'm huge. I don't always work with people uh, that are huge with the organizational part, but I am. And for me, in my mind, I have to carpe- uh, car, I, I got to put it in sections, right? Organize it so that way I can organize it in my brain to get it out. So the first place before you, <clears throat> before you even start with formations is you got to have, uh, you know, your base schemes, right? What, what do you think your kids are good at? Um, there's so many of them. And it's funny, I just had a conversation with Coach last night, and we went round and round about <clears throat> about answers, right? Answers to what the defense is doing to you. And whenever I would ask him, I was like, okay, what are our answers if this happens? All right, he says, oh, well, I'm going to run trap, right? Or I'm going to do this. I was like, well, that's another play. I'm not, I, you know, I'm like Coach Malone and a lot of other coaches probably out there. I'm not a big, well unless that's part of your system, right? I'm a wing T guy, things like that. If then, and that's already built in to, uh, to me that that's adding another play that's adding stress. So you can read the quote I have below and kind of uh, understand me all about me. Good football teams can line up in their preferred formations that execute their base offense. Well, but great football teams create advantages by forcing the defense to move and align the way they want. I'm all about that. So once we have our base schemes, uh, in place, right? This is what I think we're going to be good at. I put a little right here, offensive philosophy. That actually comes first, right? If you, you got to have a great philosophy before you can say, this is what my schemes are going to be. And whenever I want to know if a guy's going to be organized or he's going to have, you know, what kind of guy's going to be, whether it's up tempo, whether he's going to have a lot of run things, a lot of passing things, ask him about their philosophy. That'll give it away. You're going to tell right here by me, I'm, you know, I'm a simple guy. I like it. Okay, so be simple. Core offensive and then core or base offensive scheme. I haven't put in there rule of four. Okay, I know I've talked to a lot of coaches sometimes that rule of four uh, and all those little areas of runs, you know, uh, drop backs, quicks, screens, uh, all that stuff, you know, sprint out. Like you can just put it under rule of four. Be multiple. In this day and age, defensive guys, I'll tell you what, and I'm going to tell you this, if you want to get smart, or you want to become a smarter offensive play caller, then go to these clinics and sit in a, in a defensive presentation because you can see how they're they're just getting smart. They're evolving as offenses evolve. And so I learned I learn a lot about why they do what they do. Uh, so be multiple. You got to be multiple. Uh, I don't think you, unless you're just really, really good with the Jimmys and Joes, I don't think you can just go over there and line up. I've never, I've, I've probably been on one team that I was like, man, we can just line up and we can just mash people or do what we want. That's it. 20 years in education and teaching, coaching, that's it, one team. So various motions, shifts or trades, formations, personnel, tempos, right? Those are all easy to do. And you can do these things if you're organized, right? If you have a simple mode of communication and you don't have a, a, a crap load of, uh, of schemes, you gotta be flexible, okay? Uh, that flexibility goes back in the same bucket as these other two about communication, right? Win the football numbers game by altering the uh, the formation structure. To the defense, it's going to be complex, right? Defense coordinators, I love it when I get these phone calls like, man, Coach James, what are y'all doing over there, man? I've been up all night just trying to put everything in the computer to get a gauge on you. That's the biggest compliment as a, as a play caller, in my opinion, that I can get as a coach because – if I'm stressing you out and you're having a hard time preparing for me, then then that's part of the that's part of the goal, right? Because especially if you don't have those Jimmys and Joes. So 
I want to always, this is always good, right? Players, I want to play fast, be physical, and I want to execute. End of the day, that's what keeps your job. All right, so now we're going to jump into formation structures, right? So I want to preface this by saying, okay, everybody wants to run the ball, okay? I'm a high school football coach. Yeah, I want to, I want to coach college, but high school football coach. And I get it now, the air raid. I mean, man, I love it too. And some of the best passing schemes that I have, as a, as a play caller, come from the air raid because, you know, it's like when guys run the triple option, the flex bone or the wing tee, it's like, okay, that's where all of us offensive play callers these days is just recycling through the spread or through whatever it is, whatever kind of play call you are. It's just recycling it. So, so I like to steal from the best, but it starts with formations, okay? You got to know football and you got to know where they like to line up against your formations. So I kind of try to put them in boxes right organizational boxes so for me formation structures right i there's balanced ones right two by two your doubles or things like that okay then you have different types of unbalanced this is where you can start to get a little wild right so whenever i talk about unbalanced formations it's not you know there's a whole bunch of things right you go regular unbalanced you're just you know adding linemen in for skill guys and putting them to one side you can go tackle over you can be unbalanced and tackle over at the same time you could be unbalanced by adding, you know, with the unbalanced with receivers, right? Or just receivers by themselves. So like even three by one, a lot of people don't know that three by one is where you go by from two by two to three by one, they have to make an adjustment. If not, then you know, you're going to attack the strong side. That's how my mind works. And in the passing game, right? And then when that's how my mind works on a line of scrimmage. So there's different ways to affect the defense and how they line up. With your O-line up front, you can add guys, move guys over to one side, okay? Or with your wide receivers, your skilled guys, you can move them. Number three, you can even condense, right, or bunch those guys up. Add them to the run game. That's what we're getting to, right? Condense those guys. Add them to the run game if they're blockers, right? If, if they'll go up and they don't mind getting dirty. If you can't do that and you have some of those guys that don't want to block, do what the spread guys are doing. You can line up in a heavy personnel set, have two receivers over here on the other side and, 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 and add a quick screen on there, right? That quarterback just has to go up there and look at numbers. I'm, I'm going to run the ball or I'm going to throw the quick screen just looking at numbers or leverage, right, or matchups. Special backfield heavy, okay? I call I still call it diamond. I know some of the guys I coach would call it bone, but that's where you put those multiple guys in the backfield. And if you don't want to pull your lineman, right? Sometimes you play teams, they're just so good when they see a guard pull or tackle, they, they just fly over the top and they just mess up your world and they make it slow trading for your offense. So what we do, I just start putting more running backs in the backfield and I have them block like the linemen do. So we can zone up front, but you can use those running backs to go and ISO or lead around the backside, whatever you want to do is be creative, formational structures. All right, so here's kind of some of the things that I was talking about, right? Here are two balanced formations. Uh, you got two by two, right? You can do this from like a spread look, 10 personnel, or you can drop down and do it out of 12 personnel, right? Some people will call this ace, right? So you got two tight ends in the game, two receivers off the line. It's still a balanced formation and defense respond accordingly they line up this way some people they struggle this way okay to line up just by having two tight ends versus two inside receivers it's different they treat it different okay now this is where this is where we get real funky okay unbalanced formations okay so i kind of just mixed them all in here so i could chunk stuff on the screen for you if you like you like okay and there, there can always be you can always contact me and get these things but I was out of place. For 20 years, I've been some places. I was out of place. We lined up like this, right? We called it fat right. Of course, fat left, we went the other way. But all this was is we start off in a balance big with two tights. So think of ace almost, except no receivers. And we play with three running backs, right? So what we did is we went unbalanced. So fat right is unbalanced and tackle over, all right, to the right. We create a four-man edge. If they do not shift to cover gaps, if they're not gap sound to the strong side, what are you thinking as a play caller? Well, easy money. I'm going to attack the weak side. So you have a, here's what I'm going to do. If they do this, if they adjust or over adjust, some teams over adjust, then I'm going to go and I'm going to attack the weak side. Simple. That's what we did. Another formation, same time, right? Jumbo, we called it. This one's a little bit difficult for defense to sometimes, right? Because you still have 
two eligible guys back here, two eligibles up here. This is still kind of tackle over um, balance, but you got a three-man edge and you have a four-man edge. So what is the defense going to do? They have to account for this four-man edge somehow and, and take up gaps. So are they going to do it by using linebackers? Are they going to roll their secondary down? They have to decide what they have to do, what they want to do, and you got to figure out how to attack them. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones, huge. Nobody had ever seen this when we did this back in like 07. Okay, we put a five-man edge up there. So we took out a running back, added a five-man edge. Oh, man. And teams, they it's like, oh, they know how to adjust to fat. They slid one gap over, half a gap slide. But a huge, man, that's like you really got to be knowing that this is a five-man edge. So, you, you, so now you're putting pressure on your teenagers, right, to, to know and be able to identify – how many linemen are there? And while they're worried about that, we're under center and we're snapping the ball. Good stuff. So now, fast forwarding, right? This is some of the stuff we're doing now. So now we've got a 21 personnel, okay? And we've got an unbalanced formation, right? We're still going to go tackle over, but we leave a wing, two eligibles backside, okay? And that's why this guy could be on the line of scrimmage. So, so there's just different things, right? Boot is nasty out of this, right? We always get guys loose out of boot, and people forget about that tight end all the time, especially when you zap over the Z. So get creative within your offense, but off of what you do. That's the most important thing I want to hammer home is that it does not matter uh, what your base schemes are, right? Figure out what, what you feel like that your core five offensive linemen are good at that your quarterback can run, that your running back is good at. When you figure that out, okay, now just change up the presentation. Change up the presentation. Maybe you have extra linemen that are good. That's these years here. We had a lot of those big linemen, not a lot of skilled guys. Well, guess what? How do we get those other are the best guys in the game? Creating these formations. All right, so now more on balance. I'm telling you, defenses – I've never seen the formation until we did this this last year. We called it yellow. But look at this, right? Right. All of these guys right here. Now, the tight end is ineligible, but what it does to a defense, how will they defend this? And then what happens if you motion, right? If you shift, how are they going to adjust? Maroon, right? Kind of the same thing we had earlier with our RAM formation. But what ended up happening is, is now you have a tackle over, okay? But you have a twins out here that's eligible, so you got a three-man edge, but you have two backside eligible receivers. So all different for the defense, okay? I love this one as well. We called it Raider, even though the tight end was dead because our X was on and our Z was was eligible on the slide. But we have, you know, there's this bubble in here, okay? How, how are they going to spin down and cover this? And then what happens if you go gun and you stack your backs and you run like a stretch the other way? Oh, no. So just knowing how or seeing on film from game planning or trying it out in the spring to see, you know, how defenses react to how you line up. That's always the fun part. This is one probably people have seen, right? We call this blue, blue wing. All right. So you got a wing over here, right? My boy, uh, Kenny Simpson, this is like his base formation. That's how they line up to run buck sweep. All right. So just different ways. All right. Here's some other kind of condensed uh, formations. So this is what I like to do as well. I threw in a little diamond. I'll talk about this one first. I threw this in here so I didn't have to make another slide, right? I, I was kind of putting some things together, right? Give you a, a whole bunch. And if you want more, just holler at me when we get get off of this Zoom or whenever, and I'll, I can show you more. But I've all this is one of my favorite formations is diamond. If you, because there's different ways to go about it based on your personnel, right? I've got two outside receivers, okay, and that I can go play catch with. So if you're going to man up, right, and you're going to bring those safeties down for run support or to fit these D-gaps, well, guess what? I have a choice to make. If one year, we were a power football team. These guys were not skilled guys. These are more like fullbacks or tight ends. <clears throat> Excuse me, tight ends. So we put them up, these B-gaps about a yard deep, and we ran power. We ran a, you know, we booted, we reversed, right, and we had max protection and threw the ball. And, man, I'm telling you, we scored points, and teams could not stop us. Then another year, we didn't have those two big guys. So guess what we did? I still like the formation. So I put my four best skill guys, I put them all right here as far as running the ball, right? Quarterback to operate it, two receivers that could play catch. And we ran stretch, power, you know, we ran, you know, full sweep the other way. I mean, and because this is still a balanced formation, but we put three backs back here. 
Now, what we like to do, some of the things I learned to do that I love, is we will condense formations. I know people say bunch and condense. You think of maybe 10 personnel and bunching receivers out wide, a lot of you know spread or RPO teams. They like doing it this way. Well, when I'm talking about adding numbers for the run game, squeeze them and bunch them, right? Squeeze them and bunch them together. And now, guess what? If these, let's say, you know, like maybe just your ex is your stud receiver. All right. Well, guess what? The, these guys are backup running backs or two tight ends. So you could line up. I can't even tell you what personnel. It changes every year. I just put our best guys here. And so now I can run, you know, one back power this side, but I can, you know, bring an, an extra puller. I can run counter and bring an extra puller, right? Listen, I, I can read this guy right here in the open gap send everybody and we can run Zorro or inside zone to the right. And then what colleges are doing now too, is these guys are all responsible for blocking for the outside bubbles. There you go. So it just makes it tough here down here. We've got, so this right here, we would, we call this aqua bunch. This down here, we call this one right here, great bunch. And this was just our tight end trips. Right. And what we did is we bunched them up tight, just like this. And the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna pound you. We're gonna run toss. We can gap scheme. We can do whatever, right? And then when you you start falling asleep, we hit your weak side, or we play action and we threw it deep to our best receiver out here, and then purple squeeze. This is just two by two. We squeeze them together, and you've got all that run game. So the possibilities are endless. All right. So I talked to you about the what. I showed you a little bit about that. Now here's some of the why. When you add numbers to the run game, this right, this is our this is a little bit of the how, but why, right? Because we want to force the defense to align the way we want. When I'm looking at you on film and I see how you handle certain offensive formations, you know, now I want to see what happens when those teams motion, they shift, they move. I want to see what you do. Because you can also affect the formation structure by shifting and motioning. I love to do that. That's part of that should be part of everybody's like game plan. How do how does the defense handle when you motion a jet sweep motion, a you know, an orbit motion, you know, that the new ones becoming famous is that little return motion when you know you're in man, hit the guy in the flat. So force them to line up the way you want and then, and then screw them up. Take advantage of their alignment with core offensive schemes or plays. Guys, just because you line up this way doesn't mean you have to invent a new offense. Run what you run. Okay. And this put a trick for that week on add it just for the, you know, just for that week. Uh, sometimes we just like to carry one that we'll start, we'll practice. And then we just put a little bells and whistles and it's the same play, the same presentation, except this guy goes left. Boom. And there you go. Okay. So you just like when you change, like up front, we had the fat, right, fat left. and you change those old linemen, the defense must adjust or else if they do not slide their defense in front, then they're asking for trouble. If they do not adjust, you know, you take advantage and you have to be able to do this. And I think one of the most important things I, I've learned as a play caller, because I've been a head coach, I've been an offense coordinator, right? And I'm helping call offense now. So one of the things that, that I love is when I have other coaches like myself who experience and have that experience, if you can see it during the series, change it then, right? There's, hey, I, can, I saw it last series. Now I'm going to adjust this series, okay? That's where you start. But then now, hey, I line up in a formation on first down. I see how, I, oh, they're leaving a lot of grass and space. We're outnumbered. So maybe second down, I run a play, but I come right back to that formation and I run the other play to go the other way, take advantage. Our answer to these adjustments, simple. Change the formation structure with tags. Tag your formation, the bunch, the condense, the tackle overs, whatever. Motions, shifts that you'll kill people. Tag your core offensive scheme. Don't worry about adding anything else. Just tag it and only affects a few. But those five main guys, the offensive linemen that have to get it done in the trenches, their job remains the same. Easy money. Also, another way to do it, right? Read defenders. You can flat defenders. You can double defenders, right? They say the old saying about the angles and leverage, and I, and I get it. Sometimes I don't have big offensive linemen. A lot of times I haven't been. I'm in a district. We just get up there and dominate. So guess what? I like double teams. Double teams always make my heart flutter, right? So you can get two two guys on their one guy and kind of whether it's a gallop technique, a true double combo. Get yeah, about five minutes, longer. coach. Got you. Boom. All right. So here we go. So now here's a little bit of how, 
right? So I want to show you a couple pictures. Outnumber them by using the gap run scheme, right, to bring extra blockers to the party. So you can see here we got an aqua, right? And then now we're going to run GH counter, boom, and we bring our Z around, right? We bring the X around too. So we just tag Cruz. Those guys are going. Quarterback is going to fake it to the tailback, and he's going to keep it. We outnumber him to the party. Okay, here's another example. Make everything look similar, right? So we're doing the same action, but guess what? Now we're going to read this five technique, and these two guys are going to block for the stretch, but everybody else is cruising around and blocking for the QQ uh, on the GT. Bash concept. All right. Pre-snap motions, shifts, I talked about that, and then formations, formations, right? So that's kind of some of those things I want to talk about with that deal, all right? And boom. So there's my share there. And then what I was going to do was get into some video. If I don't have time, Coach, you just let me know. You, you got you have roughly, I mean, so far there's no questions. So I would just go to the video, Coach, for the next Sounds five or good. six minutes, and, and I'll let you just go. If I have a question or something pops up, I'll just shout it out. But uh, so far you're good. Like I said. So far I'm good. Yep. Awesome. Yes, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to jump into the main one then. Okay. Boom. Let me share the screen, and then we'll go from here. Never seems like enough time, babe. I talk football all day. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so here's just some of the some of the plays we're in, right? So I'm at a six A high school, right? We're playing a pretty good football team, right? So we're we're kind of lining up. See if I get a little tired of view for you right here, right? So we line up, right? We set a little motion, okay? You can, right? Do that. Move some linemen, right? We're just trying to outnumber them, trying to get the toss going, right? Just to get some numbers out on the edge. And you can see it's just kind of getting bodies. And I'm going to tell you right now, this running back right here, he ran for 1,200 yards and not a, not a very good offensive line, right? Look at that. Look, I, I'll even give you a little end zone shot, right? Bodies just move. All we're doing is just running. We're, just running we're, we're doing wide zone up front or stretch, but we're tossing it, but we're, we're bringing people around. We motion that guy over there to the boundary and warm him out, okay? All right, so here we just, we just, we just line up in it. Okay, so we were we're on balance, line up in it, run the toss again. Here we go. Another run. But it's all about numbers. If they over pursue, those running backs will see it. Those running backs will see the when guys over pursue. All right? Let's see if I can get you a really good one here. Oh yeah, look at this. Gold tray. So we're like in our ace formation. And we have two receivers over here to the side. Boom. Okay, so our quarterback looks out. They're counting. Look how many guys they have back. Kind of looking like a, it looks like a three safety deal, but see how they got all these guys deep? Hey, that's light box numbers. So we, we feel like we're winning. And this is this is freaking on third down. Look at this run. Third down along. Let's go. Right? That's that's how you do it. Just numbers. Right? Everybody here can count. Right? And that's all we're doing. Right? Now here's a gap scheme one, and, and I'll probably, you know, if I get another one in, I will. But here's the gap scheme, right? Those were zone schemes. So gap schemes, set them up over here, right? We got all these bodies over here. And then guess what you can do? Bring them to the party. So when you're counting those numbers, guys are pulling. We're getting around, okay? We end up bouncing it outside. So we end up, the, the run ends up going into the boundary. One of my favorite, get guys in the backfield, right? Like we're reading, that don't even look like it's a good play. Right, but still, we—I mean, it should be a good play. We've got numbers, so maybe the quarterback made a bad read. Oh man, look at this! Where that gold tray again looks like. Okay, and we 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 empty out the backfield just to see what happened, right? And and I don't know why the quarterback threw it there, right? But we're we're basically just saying if somebody goes with him, which should be the read, then we know we're banging our lock or a little pipe bomb. Somebody goes. I don't know why he doesn't throw to this guy with all this room. But all we can do is lead the horse to water, but we can't make him drink. Okay? But that's still a good football play. So your goal is to get yourself in, in a good, advantageous football play every time. That's it. Kaboom. Oh, look at that. So now we send the motion over here. Look at all these guys they bring over with the motion. We saw they brought all these guys, and then we're just going to boot away. Look at these guys wide open. Right? So we got a guy first down. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that I'm, that I, I'm going to stop right there. I think that that's good enough for you. Coach Bonsher, is that, is that yeah, oh, that's perfect, coach. right there? No, that, you did great. Like I said, I mean, I'm all about formations and now that's partially because I've been in a, I think I did, I did the math the other year said 13 years 
I have had at least a formation wise. I've either fully been in or par- or had a set of either wing T, double wing, um, or some sort of quote unquote old school offense. Like we ran some Maryland Eye this year. Um, there you go. I think like seven of my 13 years. I mean, there's only been, and it might even be more than that. I, I'd, I'd have to redo the math, but like there's only been a handful of years where we've been true full spread. Like it's not, Absolutely. I mean, we're I, in like even this year, like we'll be able to get in some stuff. Um, that's just, again, that's, but that's more my philosophy and kind of fits into what you talked about and what coach Malone talked about, especially when you're getting to either schools that historically have not been good, that are small, have small rosters and they play. Um, you got to be able to formation people and, and, Absolutely. and, and to be honest, like it kind of coach Malone talked about, and you've kind of piggybacked with your formation stuff is you're not going to run 12 run schemes. You're going to have three or four. You're really going to rely on. And the formation part is what you, you're going to force people. Do you have the checks and answers or can you recognize as you kind of point out, do you have the five? do you recognize that's a five man surface or four man surface? Do you, do you, are, are just somebody recognizing that and how quickly are your kids recognizing that? That's the other thing. Um, so like I said, uh, coaches Twitter is in the chat, but also it's on the screen. Um, as long as this number, um, coach is always easy to get a hold of me and coach have known each other. I think four or five years, give or take now sure. someone there. Sure. Um, and I mean, we'll chat every off season, either one of us looking for something or needing help with something. And, um, obviously coaches got other stuff on my channel and, but coach will help you out however you can, just like I normally will. And, um, so don't hesitate to re- uh, reach out to coach and then coach, like I said, I need to send you a DM. Once I know the dates, I'll let you know and see if anything matches up. But yeah, my, okay. I'll, I'll be, I'll be down there at least for a week or two. We get some lunch or something. Um, but especially since you're, I mean, you're so close. Like my mom's in spring branch in between. By New oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Like I said, yeah, so. I mean, and I'll probably fly into San Antonio directly. So, um, like oh, I said, yeah, you're that, that good life. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, anytime you can go to San Antonio, it's a good life, coach. Like I said, the river, <laughs> the, the, the river walk is, is God's paradise. I mean, that's that is beautiful. So, coach, thank you. Well, appreciate you. Um, appreciate it. And have a good rest of your uh, Sunday, coach. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.